everybody. Welcome back to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie, Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie, Jessica. So it's that time again. It is time for our Bestie Book Tea, where we go over all the books that we read this week with a one-minute synopsis. So grab your favorite beverage. I've got <laughs> apple cider today. I have Pepsi because it's later in the afternoon today. <clears throat> and grab your favorite coaster, which mine are buried under books. And... <laughs> Let's talk and spill the tea on all the books that we read this week. Mandy, how was your reading week? My reading week was pretty good. I have eight books today, mm -hmm. this week, not today, this week. This week, this week. This is about right. I have nine <laughs> books and it was a pretty good week. I did a, a reread of like three books, but that's okay. I, I just needed it this week. So let's do my first book. All right. So get to the timer ready and let's do it. All right. Let me know when it's going. Are we Go. Ready? Okay. So I did a reread of Cora Riley's Sweet Temptation. So this is one of my favorite books. It was like my very first mafia book that I ever read. So this is about Cassio and Julia. This is an arranged marriage. Cassio loses his wife at the very beginning of the book. We don't know exactly what happened. We just know that she has passed away. And he has a baby at home, a baby girl, and then he has a toddler. And so he needs a wife. So this is mafia. So they have to have a wife because you can't have a nanny, apparently. You have to have a wife. So he gets himself involved in an arranged marriage with Julia. She is just turning 18. Cassio is like this cruel underboss that he's compared to Luca, who is the head of the familia. He's just, he's really cruel. So she's really intimidated by him. And the story really is, it's more about their story than it is the mafia story. But it's about Julia finding her way as a mom and a, a, a like a mom of two toddlers that really aren't hers you know, loving them and learning to find her way with, with Cassio. So this is one of my absolute favorites. I love it. Did my, do I have a timer? Yes, your timer went off. I didn't hear it. I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Goober. I am struggling kind of with a cold and so I needed to cough. So I muted myself. I was yes. trying to be polite. That's okay. That was very sweet of you. You've read this. I love it just because... I love their story. Their story is like, it's a good story. Yes. I There's actually want to read that again. Cause I think I was a little harsh on it the first time. And now that I've read some more mafia, I'm like, mm -hmm. I think I might actually enjoy that a lot more than well, I did. Read more in that world where mm -hmm. um, this was the very first thing that I read. And then I jumped into Cora Riley's Born and Blood. Mm -hmm. And then now when I go back, I'm like, oh, there's the, those people. Like, oh, I see those people, you know? So mm -hmm. um, I just, I loved it. I love their story. I loved watching her become a mom. It was great. So, okay. Great. So let me get my timer ready. Okay. okay. So my book is Mind to Keep by Sarah Fields. This is a mafia, insta-love, insta-sex, kind of erotica, BDSM sort of book. It's a wild ride, folks. <laughs> so, this is about Ava, and she is walking home one night from work, and she gets attacked by Anthony's men. Anthony is mad at her because she denied him when he was in high school with her. So what better way to seek revenge than to attack her on the streets several years later? Mm. She is able to get away and she seeks refuge in Cyrus's restaurant. Cyrus, unbeknownst to her, is also in the mafia world, but he's kind of living out his life retired, but his name is still very feared in the city. And so he is asking her what's going on and she is not honest with him about what happened with Anthony. So that means Cyrus has no choice but to spank his bad girl. <laughs> That's okay. So Mandy, what did you rate this? Five. <laughs> Seriously? No, I rated it oh. a four. Okay. <laughs> so you did like it. I did. It was so, I mean, you just have to go into it, I guess. I didn't go into it knowing what it was, but as I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of picking up what's going on here. So yeah, it's just, it was different. This so came in my dark romance box. Book so box. It's, yeah, it's uh, signed and it's really pretty, got really pretty pages in it. I got it for Christmas. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I read, now this is going to be out of order, um, but 
I read, um, what? Why does the it's out of order? What do you mean? Because this is a part of a trilogy, this book. I'd already read the first two. <clears throat> so I went and read the third. But then after I read this one, I went back and read the first two. So I'll talk about them here in a minute. I did a reread of them. It's a trilogy and you read it out of order. It's not a trilogy. They're different couples in each book. Okay. Got me? You said trilogy. But it is. It's it's a trilogy. They're just different about couples. In different each book. couples. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, you ready? You've already used your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Would you just swip, flip the switch? <laughs> okay. Time's a second. What? I said times. Times a second. So this is um, Texas Splendor by Lorraine Heath. I kind of went on a historical binge this week. So this is the third book in her Texas trilogy. This They all follow the Lee brothers. So this is about Austin. And in books prior, something happened. He was accused of a crime that he didn't commit. And he has spent five years in prison. He is now out. And he's going home to his sweetheart, who he went to prison because he was protecting her, was basically what happened. When he gets there, she is married to his best friend and has a child. So he's a little disgruntled, a very disgruntled, he's very upset. And so he takes off to go clear his name because he's got nothing better to do. And along the way, um, he comes across a small farm where our heroine Lori lives. And she, yeah, Lori. Um, and she has been, her family was murdered a few years prior. And she has been living in the house. She won't go out to the barn where it happened. She's dealing with a lot of trauma. And so he's trying to clear his name. She has trauma. A whole bunch of stuff happens. Five stars. Love it. So good. I love me an old West one. That's good. It's good. Okay. <laughs> next. All right. My next book was Love at First Sight by Cara Bastone. This is an audible original with a full cast. So it's technically not really a book book. It's an audible book. Okay. If that makes sense. So listen to this. If you are looking for something fun, upbeat and really low drama. This follows Marigold and Robbie as they are working together on a project in their psych class. They're both a little bit older than the rest of the college kids though. So they're working on like a second degree type thing. So they're in this psych class and they have to go and interview other couples to determine if love at first sight really exists. So this was a lot of fun. I love the interactions and I loved, I just loved it. It's one of those that's safe to listen to in the car because there's really no spice, no drama. It was just really fun. I'm so impressed. I know. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. You get a gold star. I can talk longer in my next one now. <laughs> that is not how it works. Okay. So I, um, since I read that last one, I had to go back and read the first one because I remembered how much I loved it. So this is the first book in that Texas series, uh, Texas Destiny series. Um, so this is about Amelia in Houston. So this is Texas Destiny, obviously, by Lorraine Heath. This is about um, Amelia. She is a mail order bride. She is heading to Texas to meet her husband, who she believes to be Dallas. He's supposed to pick her up at the train station, but unknown to her, he actually broke his leg, and so he sends his brother, Houston, to pick her up. Now, it is a three-week journey from the train station to their homestead, where they're at, to the ranch. And um, a lot happens along the way, and they did get derailed. Now, Dallas has, or Houston, sorry, Houston, the main male character, was in the Civil War, and he's actually missing his left eye, and he has some damage. Um, and so he is kind of, he's damaged on the inside and on the outside. And so he's this gruff, mean guy, but there is just something about this girl. And so they have to deal with their attraction because she's already agreed to marry the other brother. So what happens when they get home? Oh, that's a plot twist. I'm telling you. It was, it's really good. The series is great. I mean, don't let the covers fool you. This series is great. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, my next book is Lo Thy Neighbor by Tegan Hunter. This is also available free on Audible. So if you're looking for like an enemies to lovers type book where there's really no bullying going on, this is for you. Like really, they just don't get along. The worst thing that he ever does is that he buys the last piece of cherry pie consistently at the cafe and that gets her all worked up in a tizzy. That's rude. <laughs> I know. So this is Noah and River. They live next door to each other in an apartment building. Noah plays this music a little too loud and it really starts to irritate River. So she marches over there in her towel to chew him out because he interrupted her quiet bath time. 
<laughs> While she is chewing him out, he had been cooking and he starts a kitchen fire. It's a grease one and he throws water on it and oh. he can no longer stay in his apartment. She feels bad because <laughs> she kind of played a part in it happening. So she finds herself agreeing to let him stay with her while his apartment is being remodeled. And that's where their relationship kind of starts to go. And he has an emotional support turtle. It's hilarious. That is cute. Yes. Emotional support turtle. It was a good read. Good. How many stars did you give it? Four. Okay. Okay. Um, all these Texas Destiny ones, I gave five. I've noticed it's taking more to get a five star out of me lately. I think as you read more, it's going to, I think. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So are we ready for the, the middle book in this Texas Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Texas Glory by Lorraine Heath. These are all my um, thrift books purchases. So you can tell they've got other, yeah, I got them from thrift books. So this is about Dallas, the brother who had the mail order bride coming out, right? He still needs a wife in this video or in this video, in this book. And so he actually enters into an arranged marriage with um, the neighbor's daughter because there's some dispute over the land, over a river on the land. And so that is um, Cordelia. And Cordelia has been raised very sheltered. She's Her dad and her brothers are actually sl slightly abusive towards her. She's helped take care of her mom who had a stroke um, when she was younger and now the mom has since passed. And so she never went, goes anywhere without bodyguards or with people with her to accompany her where she goes. And then she marries Dallas and Dallas is like, I don't care what you do. Just give me a son. And that is all he wants is a son for, to carry on his name and his, his empire that he's growing there in Texas. And so for her, Cordelia, Cordelia wants love. She doesn't just want to give him a son. She wants a man to love her and take care of her. She wants that security. And so this is their story and how they figured out definite trigger warnings in this one. I know it doesn't look like it, but there's trigger warnings for um, child abuse and abuse and loss of pregnancy. So I don't normally get yeah, out. If you've ever been traded for land. That was <laughs> if you've ever been traded for land by your father. Um, I just have to say that, that I don't normally do that, but loss of pregnancy is huge. And so I just mm -hmm. want to let y'all know that before you get into it. See, I've been reading these books about Texas and I just said y'all. Wow. You know, it rubbed off. It's sad. <laughs> Next week, you're going to be wearing your cowboy hat. No, because it's really hard to find a good historical that's Western that's not, this is horrible, a clean historical. I don't need crazy. I just need a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, guys. So some if you have a Western you love, put Maybe. it in the comments. You should see if Sarah Fields has written anything <laughs> Western. No. <laughs> That's a little scary. Cowboys don't do that. Okay, tell me about yours. Okay, my next book is Bound by Love by Cora Riley. This is book number six in the Born in Blood Mafia Chronicles. The first half of the book, we relive what happened in books two through five. And I will be honest, I got a little bored. So it was kind of feeling like a three-star read for me because I already knew what was going to happen. I get why it was put in there. I think it could have been summarized maybe a little bit better. And so then the last half of the book is like a five-star read for me. So I worked it out. So it's a four-star read for me on average here. But the last half of the book was fantastic. This is Aria and Luca, and I love them. So I loved all the new material. And just as things were like getting good, it ends. And so now I'm very, very excited to go over to the, what is Kimura it? Kamara Chronicles. Yes, the Kamara Yay. Chronicles. Super excited about that. I don't want to talk about what happened in this book, though, because I really feel this is a series you just got to kind of follow along. And yeah. Yeah. I am so excited that you get to read the Kamara Chronicles now because they are my favorite. So excited. But somebody keeps giving me other things to read. Well, tough duck. Suck it up and read. Let's read historical fiction and vampire books. And you said it in that tone. <laughs> I did not. <clears throat> All right. I ready? didn't read a vampire book. I made you read a vampire I book. I know. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of historical, I was still on a historical kick. <laughs> and so I don't know why. This is not my thing, typically. So I read um, Julie Garwood's The Secret. Do not let this this cover fool you it is actually a really great book this is a five-star read so this is about judith and ian so judith 
meets this little girl when she's four and the little girl is five. She is um, English and they meet on the border of England and Scotland. The girl is Scottish and they become best friends and they remain best friends their whole life. Now the best friend, um, her mom and grandma both died in childbirth. And so when she gets pregnant, she sends for Judith. Judith has gone around and talked to uh, all these midwives she could find to make sure that she has the best practices or to be able to tell her friend how, you know, help her give birth without, and, and comfort her because she's afraid she's going to die. So the best friend married the brother of the Laird in Scotland where they're at. And so when it's time for her to come, they the Laird actually goes and gets her. So Ian goes and gets her and brings her. It's a great book. She's like flighty and, and just kind of, I don't know, she's just kind of a fun person. And he's this gruff guy who is like, but but yet for her, he turns soft and it's the whole, you touch her and you die kind of situation. Um, Five stars. This is great. This is a great, great book. Do not let it fool you, the, the cover. Because I looked at that cover and I went, nah, I'm good. But then I read it. I mean, I put it off for a good year. So, yeah. Okay. What else did you read? Okay. My next book is called Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. This is a five-star read. Absolutely like one of my favorites now. It is historical fiction. She is also a Christian author. And this book is just fantastic. It's also a movie. And I absolutely love the movie. So I was like, oh, I wonder what I'm going to think of the book. The book is just as good as the movie. Uh, so they're both fantastic. So this is about Angel. She was sold into child prostitution. And she is now in a brothel, working in a brothel out it, during the gold rush times in California. And Michael feels God calling him that he is to marry Angel. And this is their story. I don't want to give anything away. It is so fantastic. There is... Um, quotes from different readings there's quotes from the bible and it's just i mean it's about god's redeeming love but oh it's just so so incredibly good okay i'm gonna have to read that one you have you should it is fantastic okay so still on my historical kick for my next book i'm sorry for everybody normally there's a few people who have book two watch <laughs> and they read a lot of historicals and i'm like fast forward through that one fast forward through that one it's they're it's typically not my thing so i'm sorry if this isn't your thing but you're getting some historicals this week redeeming love is so good it doesn't even have that historical fiction vibe okay yeah. i loved it so this book is also another lorraine heath but this one actually takes place in in london um, so this is When the Duke Was Wicked by Lorraine Heath. And I read this one because I was told that the heroine had had a mastectomy. So that was the real reason why I picked up this book. So you, it's got the step back. Um, so this is about Lady Grace. She is set to inherit a really big dowry when she marries and her and her family's inheritance. And she's afraid that the man that she marries only wants her for her money. And so she's reached out to Duke Lovington, who's been a friend of her since she was a little girl. And he is recently, within, two years before, lost his wife and daughter. And when he lost them, he just kind of became this, like, he became a male whore, basically. He just gambles and sleeps with women all over the town. And so she begs him to come and help her weed out the people who would just want her for her money. But at the same time, she also has what she refers to as a deformity. It is not a deformity, you know, a less than situation. But she, you know, has that mindset because she still has to tell the person who marries her that, hey, I only have one boob. Um, and I can understand that it had, probably had to be hard. But I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. I just don't like it when you try and make it sound like it's a deformity because it's not. So that's my one thing. Don't tell me it's a deformity. Okay. <laughs> you know me. I it's it's very passionate about that. Well, Jessica, my next book was called Let's Get Textual. <laughs> what? It's a play on words. Textual. Oh, I get it. Let's get textual by I Tegan it. Hunter. Blonde roots just kind of jumped right in there. Tell me about it. All right. So this is an accidental text that turns into something. And apparently this is becoming a trope. I didn't even know was there that I am here for the accidental text message trope. <laughs> 
So this is Delia and she gets this text message about meeting up and she just assumes that it's her brother that something goes on with her brother. So he's always got like a new phone number. And so she just assumes it's her brother. So she responds and there's back and forth. And then eventually they discover that <laughs> he is not her brother. And it's Zach. Sorry, I couldn't find his name. So they are texting back and forth, and this is just kind of where their relationship goes. Uh, it's based on this. It is a lot of fun to read this book. Uh, they There's an adorable little goat in this book called Marshmallow. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else in my notes to really see about it. Um, but I, can't, I don't really want to give anything away. I kept trying to figure out, like, who, like... Her name's Delia. So I kept thinking, like, they're like, how's this gonna work out? Like, because I felt like there was something else happening in this book, but I kept thinking in my head, her name is Delia. Like that is really gonna stand out to anybody that would know her, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of like some stuff going on in there where you're trying to figure out like who who knows who kind of in this book, but it was really good. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I didn't realize this was a trope I was here for, but apparently, but apparently you are. Yeah. I think it was the goat. You were there for the goat and you know it. Yeah, but I've read this is like the second or third book, like really recently that I've read with that. With a goat? No, with the accidental texting. Oh, I was like, you've read more with goats? Mm -mm. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. So you're going to love this next one because it is a why choose romance. Yay. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. I well, can't I mean, wait. I my timer. Okay. So I read um, Beauty So Golden by Lilith Vincent. This is a retelling. It is a Rapunzel retelling, but it's Rapunzel meets um, The Walking Dead meets, I don't know what. So Rapunzel <laughs> is, is our, it, it, Rue is our Rapunzel. That is the name of our heroine. And it is the end of the world. Um, there's been a virus that has turned people into zombies. There's other animal situations going on here with these big mutts and, and whatever. Her mom is a doctor who's trying to um, find a cure. And so sh she and a bunch of other survivors are living in this big tower. Um, one night she sees something that she's not supposed to and she flees the tower. And that's after helping rescue um, Dexter, who is one of the main male characters. The main male characters are three brothers. Just so you guys know, they're brothers. There's nothing that happens with the brothers, but there's brothers. Um, and so she's had, she's known these guys since she was growing up. She ends up back in their camp, but she's had a relationship in one way or another with all three of the boys. One of them is what she calls, this is the, I gave it four stars. I probably would have given it five and I'll explain why. The, it kind of felt a little rushed towards the end. The big problem for me is that it is told that Keenan, who is the oldest brother, is a pastor. He is a Baptist minister, but she refers to him as Father Keenan, and he wears the collar. That is not Baptist. I was so confused. I was like, is he a priest or is he a pastor? And I seriously, that's why I knocked a star off because I'm like, they're two different things. Because then he was talking about being married to the church. And I'm like, not a Baptist minister. They're not married to the church or married to God. That's Baptist? not a, that's, that's a priest thing. So I had, a, I mean, I loved it. I liked the book. I loved the idea behind the premise. Um, it was great. It just felt a little rushed at the end. And that whole priest pastor thing, that is a big deal, especially for people who know and understand the difference. My next book is Curveball, which is part of Lisa Suzanne's brand new series, Vegas Heat. It is an expansion team series that is just um, getting started in Vegas. There's going to be a total of five books. The first four books are out. The fifth book comes out, I think, on April 13th or 15th, somewhere, right, right like in the next week or two. So what got me to read this new series is a uh, reel that I saw the um the author put out that said that this was age cap because <laughs> that's what I'm all over. So it said it was age gap. Um and then they meet and the reel that I saw said that it turns out like her dad is his coach. And so I'm like, oh I have to, I have to read this. This sounds really good. So that's what this is about. It's Cooper, who we met, if you've read any of Lisa Suzanne's books, we meet him in the Tight End series. He's Kaylee's roommate. 
and this is his story. The first book is called Curveball. I rated that a four. It's where they're meeting each other. They meet each other on her 21st birthday. They don't know who each other, who they are. The second book um, is called Fastball, and I rated that one a five, and I'm currently working on the third book. But they, you have to read all five books. They're like all about the same couple. That's, I think, how most of her books are set up. It's like four or five books about the same couple. Okay. Was that your last book for the week? Nope, I have one more. Okay, good. I just want to make sure this was going to be. Okay. Yeah. So my next book. I tried. Please, nobody come after me, okay? I know this is a very beloved author and this is a very beloved series. It just didn't work for me. So I read In Peace Lies Havoc by Ammo Jones. I was so confused. I'm still kind of confused through the majority of the book. Um, I love dark romance, but this, I just, I couldn't figure it out. So this is the first book in her Midnight Mayhem series. This is about Dove and Kingston. Um, it was hard because all the guys in here, they, they, they're a part of a carnival. They all had a name that started with a K and started, it was like Kingston, Keaton, some other K something. But basically Dove her parents are murdered when she's young she sees it happen then she goes into the foster care system and then we pick up where she is stripping at the strip joint as an adult and then she's kidnapped by these guys who wear skull masks and then she's taken by them and then kept for like a week and then they bring her into their carnival and that has anything goes i know they ride motorcycles in the cage kind of situation which hot as heck which is really what got me into it but I'm still confused. She was just okay with being kidnapped. I don't understand that. They were like, kidnap you, check. And she's like, okay. And then they're like, we're gonna throw you into this carnival with sex acts. Okay. No, so confused. I just, there's a lot that happened and I was just, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I just, this is the second Ammo Jones book that I've tried that I don't get the hype. It just, maybe she, maybe it's her writing style. She doesn't work for me. I'm going to try one more though. I'm going to try. You know, sometimes that just happens. Yeah. So mm. I really want to like her. I just, it, <laughs> I, it, it hasn't been, it hasn't worked. Okay. Tell me about your last book of the week. Okay. My last book of the week is Until the Sun Falls from the Sky by Christian Ashley. This is the book that I chose from convincing my bestie to read vampires or uh, what was the Shifters. Shifters. So this is the vampire book I chose. Um, it is book one in the three. That's the name of the series, the three. Have you read the other two books, Jessica? Yes, the second one's my favorite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so this is about Lucian. And if you read the book, it looks like her name's Leah. But if you listen to the audio, they call her Leah. And I was doing the book and the audio and I was like, I'm so confused. And then <laughs> I'm like, okay, I think it just, it looks like Leah, but it's pronounced Leah. So Leah is 40 and she is selected, also known as forced to be <laughs> Lucian's concubine. And she should be greatly honored by this because of her Buchanan bloodline. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a little world building here. You have to kind of figure out how everything's playing out. Um, so basically Lucian sets her up in a beautiful home and in return, he gets to drink her blood. And she gets to stay young. Yes. Yeah, so there's lots more to this book. I know I kind of gave it a little bit of a well, cheesy no, review. She knows what's coming. This is a part of her, like all the women in her family have done this. But yeah. she off for a so, while. Well, I was going to say. Sorry. Is that you need to check out our other video? Yes. And I will tell Jessica tells you about six different books and in this book in more detail. And I will tell you in more detail my thoughts on the book. So make sure you check that out. It should drop on Thursday. Perfect. Okay. So then my last book. Mine was just, it was just a little fun novella that I read. It does, does not take itself seriously, so you shouldn't take it seriously either. Um, so this is called The Viking and the Raven. It's by Annie O. Liberty. This is about, like, so basically, this is about the living past tourism-based travel company. So apparently we have learned how to time travel. And you can go for a week and travel back to time to wherever you want to go. And, and this company does that for you. So we start out with our heroine, who is Sabrina. She travels, like she works for a, like a travel company or, or a, a paper or whatever. She's writing an article on it. And so it 
her reader selected for her to go back in time to the Viking era. And so she goes back in time to the Viking era. She has like a little liaison there that kind of walks her through it. They make sure she has everything, but you can't disrupt time. You can't change anything that's going to happen. And when she meets the the girl, the, the guy in charge in the Viking village, they get an error code. And it's kind of goes from there. So it, it is, it, it did say that it was insta-love. And I think that it happened over a matter of like two days. So yes, it is. But I think going into it, knowing that it's this short, fun novella um, and knowing it's going to be insta-love, it didn't bother me. I, I gave it four stars. I thought it was cute. There's, it's a series. It's cute as heck. I might read the other ones. Who knows? So, okay. so yay. So that is all the books that we have for you guys this week. Make sure to check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for no, new videos from us. And also, I don't think we said, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are still working on our Road to 1K giveaway. Yes, we'll have something new and fun here real soon for everybody. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.